Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss The Duelists, starring Keith Carradine, Harvey Keitel, Albert Finney, Edward Fox, Christina, Christina Raines, Robert Stevens, Tom Conti, and John McKinnery, directed by Ridley Scott. Now before I get into this review, I have reviewed some of his films before, like Alien, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, Hannibal, uh, what else was there? Blade Runner and The Last Duel when I covered and I've covered those movies before because of previous retrospectives like say Alien or Blade Runner and Ben Affleck and Matt Damon writing and Hannibal Lecter so so I'm kind of an expert but not on these earlier films I'll say. There's some I'm familiar with but I haven't seen this one before, so let's just get straight into it. As this is his first movie, might I add, ladies and gentlemen. We start in the 1800s, Strasbourg, when Napoleon has some part of the war. We get the French soldiers enjoying some peace before resuming some slaughters. A young girl comes from the meadows and sees a duel between Lieutenant Gabriel Farad, played by Harvey Keitel, and a throwaway soldier who happens to be the mayor of Strasbourg, General Treillard, played by Robert Stevens, as he's the commandment of the garrison while Lieutenant Armand de Hubert, forgive me if I said that wrong, played by Keith Carradine from the 4th Hussar Regiment, admits he's vaguely aware of the gentleman and is volunteered by his commandment to find him, and bring him to the barracks where he will be under put under house arrest unless I can follow it. Unless I can follow it, I'm not a period piece kind of a guy. After reviewing Sense and Sensibility, you know why, as I couldn't follow that film, and I and I'll get to Napoleon when I get there uh, before I ever do his Oscar-winning film Gladiator as well as its sequel coming out in November, and that's a questionable decision that Ridley's making right there. I'm just gonna add right there which I've got a while before that thing comes out, but for now, I can't follow this, like, I can't follow Sense and Sensibility. Remember, I mildly recommended Sense and Sensibility, but I'll, but will I recommend this? I'll get that when I get to the end of the show. As for now, I was bored out of my stinking mind. Armand looks all over town and ends up at Gabriel's private quarters where he learns the lieutenant is attending a soiree at the salon with Madame de Leon, and the cinematography is good in this movie. As Ridley Scott, when he makes movies, I won't have any complaints about his cinematography in his movies, as he makes great-looking films, but a few are better than the others, I'll say. I'll say, as I don't know if I like the characters in this movie, as I don't know anything about them whatsoever, but don't get me wrong, the acting is good, but it's not, it's just not great. Memorable characters like Ripley, Ripley from Alien, Rick Deckard in Blade Runner, and Maximus when I get to Gladiator before the sequel comes out. But none of these characters are memorable, which is a real problem for director Ridley Scott. But remember, this is his first film, in my opinion, as this film completely slowly paced for a hundred minute long movie, I must admit. Armand and Gabriel have a duel that turns out at a point they're both exhausted and the general sees Armand and his wounded pride demanding satisfaction and five years has passed as we move on from 1801 to 1806. As from then on, for the next 15 years, Gabriel will be obsessed with the idea of settling his dispute with Armand, holding him captive by Armand's tragic, ironic concept of honor, and Armand goes to meet his friend, an army surgeon, Dr. Jacqueline, I think is his name, played by Tom Conti, asking his advice on how to get out of this messy situation as the surgeon, telling him first to keep away from Gabriel, second to always stay ahead of Armand and military rank, since only duels between soldiers are of equal ranks are tolerated, and third to rely on Napoleon for keeping the wars going, as there is no dueling during a state of war, and other than the Napoleon stuff, which did happen, I don't believe this is a true story, because at the beginning, a narration says it is a true story, and I'm thinking, that's a lie. How many movies have I seen that? But when I get to his take on Napoleon, I'll see if any of this is accurate, 
as this doesn't feel accurate other than Napoleon's name being brought up. And remember, that's another Ridley Scott film that came out this last year. One year later, Armand meets an all old girlfriend. Laura is one of the camp followers as she tells him she has an offer of marriage from one armed veteran, but they nevertheless resume their relationship, which I feel makes no sense whatsoever. It happens that Gabriel is in this same town, and of course, they will duel again, and he pays, I don't know if I'm saying that right, please forgive me, and this time, and this, this encounter is not so lucky for Armand, who ends up gravely wounded while their seconds propose that now the, the honor of both parties have been saved, but the duelists... Both refuse the opportunity for reconciliation, and Laura nurses Armand back to health. But after a face to face with Gabriel and a subsequent consolation with a fortune teller, she realizes that these duelists will go on until one of them is killed, which is corny for sure. If, if it was Armand who is to die, she cannot see any future in their relationship. And she decides to leave him and go marry the disabled ex-soldier, which seems like she she's greedy for a soldier, which makes me not care for this character. In Russia, 1812, the Emperor's Grand Army, defeated by the terrible Russian winter, and the Russian battle tactics in Eritrea, uh, while Gabriel and Arman are now like grunts in the sacred battalion, consisting of officers of all arms who had no longer any troops to command as one night and around a campfire, they find themselves again face to face as they silently recognize each other. And the next day, Gabriel requests a volunteer to go investigate some Cossack activities in the new by woods, which was a weird choice as the score was sometimes going on and off, which felt a little distracting. Like, is this movie broken or something? Like, why is it doing that? The soldiers are so exhausted and despondent that Gabriel has guessed rightly that Armand would be the only one to follow him with the ulterior motive of finishing their endless confrontation as the running of it is kind of bad. For the camp, they come face to face, each with a pair of pistols, but at the moment, a group of cassocks appear or Cossacks, I don't know if I'm or no Cossacks, that's the word. I'm sorry. Appearing and the two adversaries present a common front to fight them off following this in a gesture of reconciliation. Armon offers Gabriel to grab a drink from his flask his hip flask, excuse me, but the latter disdainfully walks away, which I thought was a little weird. This movie is so slow. Like, it slowly pays for a 100-minute movie, like I said before, and I'll say it again. Touring in the year 1814, Napoleon is in exile on the island of Elba, which sounds familiar after watching that Napoleon film last year, and the Bourbons are back in power with Louis the Seventh, I think is what it is. I, I could be mistaken. Is Ar As Armand is convalescing at his sister Leone's home, from a bad leg wood sustained during the campaign in France fighting the Persians, which was pretty looking which was a pretty looking scene, as France looks pretty in this movie. She suggests her brother he ought to get married, and offers to introduce him to Adele, played by Christina Reigns, who's the niece of the of her neighbor, the old aristocrat, Chevalier de Riverol. I think I said that right. And after a short courtship, the two marry, which did look beautiful. Armand is visited by a Bonapartist gentleman, played by Edward Fox, who is a friend of Gabriel, who tries to recruit him and to aid in the planned return to the Emperor. But Armand refuses, which does make sense, as I would too, after having a rough history with each other. Following the Hundred Days, the return of Napoleon of, to French soil, the Emperor is defeated at Waterloo, I'm thinking of the ABBA song now, and definitely exiled to the island of St. Helena, while Louis the Seventh 
is return has returned to the throne, and many known Bonar Bonapartists are arrested, including Armand, and these will be executed as examples. And upon hearing the news, Armand meets with the police minister of the Second Empire, Fulche, now Duke of Ontario, Antar no, what's the word? Otranto, something like that, played by Albert Finney, in a brief role, I'll say, and requests Gabriel's pardon, a request that is granted as Armand asks that only that his intervention on Gabriel's behalf be kept secret. And honestly, I was bored, and I wish I could like this better than I did at this point. Having discovered Armand's whereabouts, Gabriel sends his two ex-companions in arms to set yet, yet another and hopefully final duel, as that is the movie's title. The Duelists meet at dawn in, on Armand's property with pistols, and two shots each fire at will, and Armand gets the fire to fire the last shot. But instead of killing Gabriel, he fires a bullet into the ground, and with this gesture becoming the rightful owners of Gabriel's life, and the final scene shows Gabriel from the back standing on a bluff overlooking the Dorgan, no, the Dorgany River, I don't know if I'm saying that right, winding through the beautiful valley below, and he stands wearing a two-pointed cocked hat and a long black st straight military capote, reminiscent of his emperor's portrait on the island of St. Helena, could it be Le Petit Caporal, the little corporal, as they, the emperor himself humiliated and defeated? It is the end of the road for Gabriel, finally, at peace, as he meditates on what he has been his life. And this climax felt like any other Ridley Scott film, as this does it first, but not satisfying in my opinion. Now it's time for my rating. I'll give this movie a 4.6 out of 10. A rough start for director Ridley Scott, as I like his next film much better that was that's Alien and Blade Runner than this, as I was bored and couldn't follow a stinking thing in this movie, was telling me, as I could follow The Last Duel, which I reviewed before, but we'll watch that in spirit when I get there, as that was a better movie than this, and I mildly recommended Sense and Sensibility, as that was a better film than this, in my opinion. While throughout his filmography, Ridley Scott can make very good-looking films, as you won't hear too much complaint about his cinematography, as he can't make great, he can make great-looking films, but there's a few I liked, but there are some that are bad movies, and I'll get there when I get there. I don't know if I like the characters, as I don't know a thing about any of them, whatsoever and the acting is good but this is not a good movie in my opinion and as far as the plot is concerned what was it all about i mean because honestly i don't know and they say it's a true story i'm calling that a lie as the napoleon stuff is true and i'll get to napoleon when i get there before gladiator and gladiator 2 and i'll tell you if that movie was ac as accurate as this movie is as wasn't as this is didn't feel completely accurate I wish I could like this m first movie that Ridley Scott has made, but I just can't, as this is a mild non-recommendation, as this is movie is luckily short, but it was unfortunately not my favorite in his filmography, and based on the previous reviews like Alien, Blade Runner, and somewhat The Last Duel are better than this, like, they're better movies, are better movies than movies like Hannibal, Prometheus, and now this film at as it is 100 minutes long, and at the end of the day, I just didn't like that, this film, too much. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time, or, actually, I'll be back in a couple of weeks, when I get to, let's see what else is next, Legend, the Tom Cruise movie, where, and that's going to be in two weeks. The next one I'm, I was supposed to catch up with is Alien, and the one after that, Blade Runner. So, Legend is up next after this. So, until I get to there a few weeks later. Let's shoot, let's shoot pretty.